This is Mission Control Houston. Welcome to today's ISS update. It is Tuesday, January 15th, 2013. This is a live view inside the space station flight control room here at the Johnson Space Center. This team here today is being led by flight director Matt Abbott. He is sitting there at the center console. Sitting beside him is Capcom Clay Anderson, veteran astronaut. He is the uh, voice up to the crew and will be serving uh, as such throughout the remainder of today in this orbit to shift. The Expedition 34 crew on board the space station has a busy day today. Kevin Ford, the commander of the crew, uh, has been working on an experiment called Elite today. This takes a look at the connection between brain visualization and motion uh, while the crew is up on board the space station. Obviously, your motor skills and how you react to things uh, is a little bit different up in space than it is here on Earth. So what they do is they set up a camera and uh, record in three dimensions the motion of the crew members and how they uh, react going through uh, this type of experiment. They even take a look at how uh, crew members uh, would catch a baseball or something like that up on orbit because as it happens, our brains are extremely wired to uh, deal with gravity and even though the uh, crew members know that they're up in space, their brains sometimes still process, process things as if uh, gravity still had an effect on things. So what they do is they study this and uh, hopefully will lead to a better ergonomics, and better spacecraft design uh, in the future. So Kevin Ford will continue to work on that uh, for the next couple of hours. Oleg Novitsky uh, has been busy this morning working in the Russian segment on a crystal experiment that uh, exists there. He is also going to be working on the immuno experiment, which takes a look at how stress and long duration space flight affect the immune system and different pharmacological uh, ways of dealing with that. Evgeny Tarelkin himself has also been busy in the Russian segment. He has been taking some air samples, uh, which is done periodically. They also take some surface samples as well, just to make sure that uh, the air and the uh, surfaces that the astronauts and cosmonauts touch and interact with are uh, clean and uh, acceptable. He's also going to be working later on this afternoon on the station's inventory management system. This is a fairly extensive a uh, system that uh, keeps track of where everything is on board the space station. It is quite a large uh, complex and making sure that uh, the crew members know and the ground teams know where everything is is important. Chris Hadfield has uh, been working with Tom Marshburn this morning on the iServe. This is a, a new experiment on board the space station that they are in the process of uh, setting up. This is an automated system that is designed to uh, capture images of the Earth's surface from on board the space station, it is primarily a means to gain experience and expertise and automated data acquisition, something that the crew members uh, don't interact with, but is just automatically up and running. But it is expected to provide uh, some fairly unique and useful images of the ground below for disaster monitoring and assessment and also uh, environmental issues down on the planet below. But uh, what they're doing is setting up the Window Observational Research Facility, or WARF, which is a rack inside the Destiny Laboratory. They're going to be installing a 9.25 inch telescope there in that window to uh, point it down at the uh, window below. And there's also a digital camera that is set up with that telescope. And uh, then that experiment will be up and running. It's due to uh, run for about three to six weeks, just depending on the weather patterns down on the Earth below. Obviously, they need some uh, clear skies to uh, capture images uh, of the planet uh, down below. Uh, but there should be about 60 individual data acqui acquisition takes uh, of this ISERV experiment over the coming weeks. Marshburn himself has also been working inside the laboratory on some routine maintenance on the combustion integrated rack. This is one of the uh, fire experiments on board uh, the space station. The crew members periodically have to basically plug in some more fuel tanks and uh, clean up the uh, different pieces that make up that combustion integrated rack. So he is taking care of that today. And also beginning later on this afternoon, after we're off the air, activities will continue on the robotic refueling mission, or RRM. That activity began yesterday, will continue uh, throughout the week. It is out there on the far right-hand side of the station's truss structure. And uh, ground teams both here and at the Canadian Space Agency have been putting the uh, Dexter robot along with the uh, station's robotic arm through the paces. What this RRM does is it's about the size of a washing machine, and there's different tasks and different uh, attachments there on the end of that. Dexter goes up there and pretends uh, like it's servicing a satellite uh, far out in orbit. It snips some wires. It uh, removes some caps. And later on this week, it is going to be actually um, injecting some simulated fuel there into that RRM uh, practice facility that's out there outside the station. 
this is an important task for uh, the space station to uh, prove uh, can be done because whenever you launch a satellite, that satellite is limited by how long the parts are up and running and operational and healthy and also how much fuel is on board. The uh, majority of satellites don't have the ability to be uh, serviced or refueled, but this RRM experiment is proving that that can be done uh, as far out as 22,000 miles out away from Earth's orbit. And finally, today, a reboost of the station is planned for Wednesday night. That'll be tomorrow at 8.15 p.m. Central Time. This will be a three-minute, 45-second firing of the station's Progress 49 thrusters. That is the cargo craft that is on the uh, Russian segment of the station right now. And uh, that will increase the station's orbit by one statute mile. This is setting up for the uh, next Progress resupply ship that is coming up in February. That'll be the Progress 50. And it should be attempting a single launch today. Uh, docking with the International Space Station arriving at the complex on the same day that uh, it launches. The reboost should leave the station at an altitude of about 262.7 by 247.8 statute miles.